Hey guys, Professor Ackerman here. I wanted to show you a quick example of how you could analyze a typical shaft uh, with a cutting blade type system that's more of a crusher. I know a number of teams are considering designs like this and I thought this would make a good example of and refresher of how you can use FEA and SOLIDWORKS to uh, do some basic stress analysis on a simple assembly. So what I got here is I modeled up a hex shaft let me just open that up. So all I did was, this is a, uh, I believe a half inch hex shaft, just to give that a shot. Um, yep, looks like we're at a half an inch right there. And what I decided to do is that half inch, inch hex can be really nice to put the cutter on, slide on there and, and stay put as the shaft torques the cutter. Uh, and then I went ahead and assumed that I'm gonna lay down the edges and these edges are, let's see, uh, 3 eighths. So I got a half inch hex shaft and then I laid it down to 3 eighths there for the bearing. Now, some things you're gonna wanna do whenever you do a shaft analysis in SOLIDWORKS is you're gonna want to create split lines. So this, I put one over here. As a quick refresher of how you can create split lines because that's a really important skill for FEA is I'm just gonna go show you real fast how you actually create split lines like that that go all the way around the part. First, we're gonna go to sketch. I'm gonna click on the plane I wanna sketch on. Control eight goes per perpendicular. I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle and I'm gonna make it go all the way over the shaft where I want it to wrap around the uh, round shaft aspect there. So I'm gonna finish that sketch. Then what you do is you go to features, you go to curves, and you create a split line right there. All right, so I've got my sketch selected and the feature I want to, uh, the face I want to split, I click on the shaft, click okay, and there we go. Now I've got a split line. This is really useful if you want to select uh, aspects of a shaft. For instance, I want to put a bearing right here. Uh, it's really helpful to have a split line all the way around and we can locate the bearing and as well as other things like forces at that particular location. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this extra split line I have because I don't need that. And it's looking pretty good. So um, I'm gonna simulate the cutter as being put right in the center, but we can also see what happens as we move it to the sides. All right, so as far as the cutter, I created this simple teardrop shaped cutter part just because I thought it looked kind of cool. And it uh, seems like it's similar to some other uh, shredders that I've seen before. Um, so all I did is I'm assuming this part is either laser cut or plasma cut or water jet into this 2D shape. I didn't add any uh, tolerance on this hex. I just made it exactly the same as the shaft for the purposes of FEA. Uh, if you're actually going to make something like this, you got to be really careful about tolerances on the uh, inside here. You definitely want to allow a little bit of slop so this can actually slide nicely on the hex shaft. Up here, I filleted the edge. Now you can fill it, you can reduce that radius if you want, uh, but what ends up happening is if the geometry gets too small, you're going to have to do some mesh refinement on the rest of your system to get the mesh of your FEA way smaller. So just to keep it simple, I rounded that to a pretty high degree just so I can locate the force on that edge. So yeah, there we go. Those are the parts. Uh, I'm going back to my assembly. Now we can analyze the shaft and the cutter separately and we can still get a lot of good information from doing that. We would just have to, have to represent the forces acting on the cutter which would be a force I'm going to assume in the horizontal direction. And we'd have to match that force to the, to the torque because this has a distance of, I believe, let's take a look at the cutter, but I believe that was two inches. Yeah, so the moment arm from the center of the cutter to the edge is two inches. So I'd have to have the force down here on the shaft and I would have to have the resulting torque, which would be the force times this two inch moment arm acting on the shaft. So you can do that. But what I really like to do, um, just to simulate the system as realistically as I can, is let's just simulate this as a simple assembly of just two parts. So what I'm gonna do is go to SOLIDWORKS add-ins, load in my SOLIDWORKS simulation package, go to simulation tab, under study advisor, let's go to a new study. And I'm just gonna call it static three because I got some other ones on there. 
and we're good. We're good to start. Now the default comp component contact is bonded, which is why I left that uh, gap in between these parts is basically zero. They're just straight on. This is uh, exactly matching the shape of the shaft, and that's good for this global contact boundary. Um, as far as fixtures, we're gonna have to decide what fixture would best represent the system. We also are gonna apply an external load and then go ahead and mesh. So uh, the best way to do this would be to use the bearing fixture. So when you have a shaft with two bearings, uh, the bearing fixture allows the shaft to actually flex in a pretty realistic way. Um, and so I think that's the best way to simulate the system and get the most accurate results from the simple assembly uh, stress analysis. So to do that, I just click on bearing. I'm gonna go over to the this side where I'm gonna put one bearing. I think that's just a half inch uh, area there for the bearing to sit on. Click on that. You can only put one face at a time for the bearings. I'm gonna say allow self alignment because I'm gonna assume there's a little bit of wobble in the bearing. All bearings have a little bit, uh, some more, more or less than others. I'm gonna assume it's rigid for now because I don't have any parameters on the flexibility of the bearing. You can get data on that, but uh, we would have to dive pretty deep. So I'm just gonna assume it's a pretty stiff and uh, rigid bearing. Stabilize shaft rotation. I'm gonna assume this bearing allows free rotation about it. So uh, it's looking good. I'm just gonna click check. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and open up my fixtures. I'm gonna go ahead and add one more bearing fixture and I'm gonna put it down here. All right, so I'm gonna leave everything else the same. The only thing I will check now is stabilize shaft rotation on this bearing because if I apply a force up here and it torques the cutter on the shaft, that whole system is going to want to rotate. So I need something to counteract that rotation. So I'm assuming that this bearing is gonna stabilize the shaft rotation. Now a bearing wouldn't do that in reality. A bearing allows free rotation, but I'm gonna assume that there's some input right here. And instead of simulating what that input's gonna be or adding some kind of spring element or something like that, I'm just gonna say the input is in, is in static equilibrium with the load acting on the cutter. So that'll be good enough to get started and get a pretty good est reasonable estimate. Click OK. Awesome, so I got my bearings represented there. So I got my fixture, I'm preventing rotation at this bearing, so we should be good to add our load. Gonna right click on external loads. Gonna go ahead and add a force. I'm gonna add it just on the tip of the cutter. Now I'm gonna select the direction because I don't really want it to just be going straight on like that. I want, to, I want to make it go in the horizontal direction, the way that this cutter would actually kind of slice into plastic. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select the direction. So i got to select a plane. Let's go ahead up here in the feature tree, and I'm going to pick a perpendicular plane. And then for the perpendicular component, normal to plane, I'm going to check that. Let's say that this is going to do, I don't know, about 100 pounds. It's a good start. So that'd be 440 Newtons, roughly. Um, so it looks like it's represented correctly there. And I think we're in good shape here. Now, if I didn't have this cutter represented, and I only had the shaft, I would have to add a force that's equivalent to this 440 Newtons on the shaft in that direction. And I would have to add a torque as well of this force times the moment arm to the center of the shaft, if I was only simulating the shaft. But because I have the cutter, a force at a distance will uh, amount to the same loading scenario. All right, so we click check. I think I'm good to see if this is gonna run. All we do is go down here to mesh. I'm gonna assume I don't need to apply a mesh control and let's just see how it works by default. And I'm gonna click mesh, mesh and run. All right, looks like we got a result, which is awesome on the first try. Uh, so. What do we got here? Okay, looking at the Von Mises stress, it looks like I actually guessed pretty well. <laughs> it's uh, just barely yielding. So the Von Mises stress is 227 megapascals, and the yield strength says down here, it's a little hard to read, it says 200, 220 megapascals. So I'm basically right at the cutting edge, no pun intended, of uh, my stress. So this thing's probably going to yield. The factor of safety is essentially one. If you want to check the factor of safety plot, you can go to
define factor safety plot. What I'd like to do is set an upper limit, let's say of uh, six in this case, and let's click check. So here's our factor of safety plot. And down here we can see that because my stress is just a bit higher than my yield strength for this, I assume this was all low carbon steel, uh, just a cheap, normal low carbon steel. I have a factor of safety just below one, um, which isn't great. Now, one trick I really like to do on uh, look, when looking at FEA is if you're looking at the factor of safety plot, just right click. We're going to click on ISO clipping. I find this to be extremely helpful to actually zoom in on the areas of highest stress internal to your system. The most worrying areas, I would say, would be if the factor of safety is less than two. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Now we see that when I do that, if you move this slider, you can actually see how the factor of safety is uh, on, the, on the right side there, moving along, along that slider all the way up to six and down to the lowest point. So what I like to do is set a value that I'm worried about and notice how it removed some of the material when I do that, right? You can just make that out on the shaft. So what I'm gonna do is click the reverse clipping direction and there we go. I can actually see where on the shaft I get the locations of highest stress usually near stress concentrations where geometry changes sharply, like where this uh, hex shaft interacts with the cutter. So that's not too surprising. Also, I located the cutter right in the center of the shaft, so I get a pretty good bending moment acting on the shaft, and, uh, and also that torque. So those two stresses combined, and the stress concentration means I'm gonna get a pretty high stress right there, and that's uh, about where it would probably break. So, you can, you can always move it to see where the stress and how it spreads as the factor safety goes higher, but really we're most concerned about where it's lowest. So yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now, um, one other thing I want to cover here is, well, first of all, we gotta change our load, right? Or we gotta redesign the system because this half inch shaft is really not supporting a 100 pound force, which I probably would need to do more than that to be successful for us. Um, but let's go ahead and change that force. I'm going to say half of that. Let's see if it can handle that, which is 50 pounds. Let's mesh and run. Okay. It's looking a lot better. Factor safety is looking pretty solid at just under two. So it looks like it's pretty linear in this case. By just having the load, I was actually able to uh, reduce the stress by a, back, a factor of about two. So not too surprising there from a static stress analysis. Um, and I can still see my ISO clipping is still on. So now I can move that to, you know, let's see where the factor safety is less than three. And there it is again. So in this particular case, that's where the location of highest stress is. Okay, one other thing I want to cover here. I'm going to make my load back to 440 newtons or about 100 pounds. And one thing that uh, a lot of people like to do at a first pass, I'm going to go back to stress and so we get rid of the ISO clipping. Um, they may not use, you may not choose to use bearing supports at a glance, at a first pass, right? They are pretty realistic in this situation because they allow that flex. So you see in that right there from the top down view, they allow, this is definitely very exaggerated, but they allow the end of the shaft to flex um, just like it would in a real bearing. It wouldn't look like this. It wouldn't be nearly that pronounced, but there is a little bit of flex when you're using a bearing on a shaft. Too much is bad. So you can actually check the angle and you can see if it's compatible with the bearing type that you have because the uh, beefier bearings tend to allow less of, a, of an angle. Um, but that, you know, this is pretty realistic actually of how that shaft would look, albeit exaggerated. Now, if I chose to use something like a fixed geometry, which I know is kind of a good default, just quick first pass analysis. And, uh, what that does is going to completely fix where the bearings are. So this would be an ultra rigid bearing, which isn't super realistic, but, um, I'm going to go ahead and suppress these two bearings. And let's see what the, the fixed support would give us. 
So remember, I just barely broke when I had the bearing support. When I had this uh, slightly ambitious uh, fixed support, because it's hard to actually achieve truly fixed supports. Um, let's check a look at the factor of safety. So this says that with fixed supports, I have a factor of safety of 1.756. So, uh, you know, you would think that with these fixed supports, I'm actually in pretty good shape. Take a look at the ISO clipping. Let's make it a two. I can see where the locations of highest stress are, and it's actually at the stress concentration where the hex shaft meets that fixed support. Um, so that's not too surprising that you'll often see highest, points of highest stress where you transition from uh, free or, or something that can deflect to something that can't deflect, like a fixed support. But uh, it's kind of a little sketchy here, right? Because this factor of safety, it, it, so I think I'm good, 1.756. Um, but when I had the bearing supports, which are a little bit more accurate in this situation, I was just barely failing. So you got to be careful about your fixtures and really deciding what would best represent your system. I, I would say in our case, an actual bearing support, where we have bearings that allow some deflection of the shaft, could be most accurate. So, yeah, hopefully that was a good quick overview of uh, how you can do a quick stress analysis on your system. And uh, this can apply to a wide variety of systems, uh, but I thought this would be most helpful to get the shredder teams uh, up and running and just as a quick refresher on FEA. So yeah, uh, basically it looks like we need to beef this shaft up because barely surviving 100 pounds isn't ideal for uh, shredding through plastic. But this is only a half inch hex shaft so you know we could probably get a bigger one and then rerun this calculation or we could reduce that moment arm or we could just rethink how the loads are distributed um, or how long this is all of those parameters are going to have a pretty big effect on the the stress that you're actually are achieving in your system so yeah the other thing that you really want to focus on here would be you know how much stress is acting on these bearings so uh, to do a good bearing calculation, all you really need to do is do a simple cantilever beam approximation, find the load at this bearing and the load at this bearing, assuming the worst case loading, which may not be right in the center, it could be closer to this bearing because of the unequal distribution. Um, so figure out what would be the worst case loading on, on, a, on a bearing. And then you use this uh, C10 calculation, which I'll provide an example of in a separate document. Um, to calculate, you know, what bearing would be most appropriate for this system. So, yeah, hopefully that gives you an idea of how to do FEA on your shaft and cutter system. And I'll also be posting that, that uh, bearing example here in a little bit. So, hope that was helpful and uh, good luck on your projects.